Hello, statisticians. It's your favorite bald female professor, Christina Knudsen here, and I am going to tell you more about permutation tests. The previous videos, we had two independent groups. Now we're going to have one group with matched pairs. So we can imagine like two twins might be similar to each other, and your right shoulder and your left shoulder would be similar to each other, and um, like before and after some treatment might be similar to each other. Um, so those would be examples of matched pairs, right and left, one twin, the other twin, before and after. And um, we need to make sure to not break that pairing when we analyze the data. So when we analyze the data with a permutation test in the previous videos, then we um, randomly, uh, we pulled all the data and then randomly resplit the data into two groups. Now when we have matched pairs, what we're going to do instead, we're going to keep them all paired up, but we're just going to think about what if the measurement for the left shoulder were actually the measurement for the right shoulder? Or what if your before weight was actually your after weight? In other words, what if they had been swapped? Or what if one twin's measurement was actually the other twin's measurement? So we're just going to think about swapping the two measurements. And the um, data that we're going to use for this example is within the paired data library. So we can go ahead and run the library paired data to pull up the data, and you'll have to install that package if you don't already have it. And then we call up the data with data shoulder, and we can start looking at um, a little bit of info about this shoulder data. So this tells us that we have um, four variables subject, group, left, right. And if we do question mark shoulder, we can learn a little bit more about those variables. So for example, subject is the um, person whose shoulders we're measuring. Group is a factor. In other words, it's a categorical variable with two levels, either swimmer or control. And then we have right and left for the right shoulder measurements and the left shoulder measurements. All right, um, another thing that I like to do is get the dimension of the data. So 30 is the number of rows, four is the number of columns. So the, this says that we have four variables and 30 subjects, 30 people that we're measuring. Another goodie is STR shoulder, and that kind of shows you some more about the structure of the data. Um, so for example, subject is a character, group is a factor um, with values one and two. And then we have left, that's numeric, right is also a numeric. Let's now um, get some summary about, whoops, actually I'm getting ahead of myself. Next thing let's do, um, let's just focus on the swimmers in this example rather than um, non-swimmers. So um, to do this, we can use the subset command. If you haven't used the subset command, you can do question mark subset to read more about it. So essentially what it does is it subsets whatever data set you give it based on some um, requirements or restrictions. So here, this line here is subsetting the shoulder data and it's going to only snag the rows that have group equals equals swimmer. So in other words, it's only going to snag the rows for the swimmers. Okay, so if we go ahead and run this and then I'll save it as swim data, we can um, maybe look at the dim of the swim data. So this tells us that we have 15 swimmers and again, four variables, and we can look at the summary of the swim data. So here's um, subject, group, all swimmers, no controls, the um, six number summary for the left shoulder, the six number summary for the right shoulder. We can look at the head of the data. So this is just the first six rows of the data and the tail of the data, which is the last six rows of the data. All right, so that's um, how we can get a little bit acquainted with the data. And there's more ways to, um, this isn't like exhaustive. Another thing that's nice to do is to look at some visualizations with the data. So we wanna compare left shoulder and right shoulder. So let's get a feel for what those um, left and right measurements look like. 
So here with this box plot command, I put swim data dollar sign left and then swim data data dollar sign right. So on the left side here, we have the left shoulders and then we have the right shoulders over here. With paired data, we want to take the difference between the two variables. So like we want to take left minus right or before minus after or twin one minus twin two. Um, and it doesn't really matter if you do left minus right or right minus left as long as you remember which one you're doing so that you keep your interpretation correct. So here, let's just do left minus right just because we need to choose one of them. And if we just run the differences, this is just calculating for each person how much more flexible their left shoulder is than their right shoulder. And then let's save that as a new variable in our data set. Let's call that variable diff. Now we can look at a summary of those diffs. Median is zero, min is negative three, pos uh, max is positive seven, and we can look at a histogram of the left minus right measurements. Okay, so now that we kind of are familiar with the data, we can get into actually doing our permutation test. So from the previous videos, we know that we need to choose um, a number of resamples, which in the previous video I labeled M, and we'll keep it as M just to keep that consistent. And then we set up a null dist a distribution that will um, contain our test statistics under the null hypothesis. So speaking of null hypothesis, what is our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis, just that we can be super clear about this. So our null hypothesis is that the two shoulders are equally flexible for swimmers on average. So in other words, if we look at left minus right, at the difference between uh, left and right, and take that average, then that average is equal to zero. And then our alternative hypothesis, um, I'm not really a shoulder expert, so I don't have any like guesses of which one might be more flexible. So let's just see if the two shoulders uh, have different flexibility on average. We're not going to guess like, oh, left shoulder is more flexible or right shoulder is more flexible. Let's just see if there's a difference between the two shoulders on average. So in other words, the mean difference is not equal to zero. That's what we'll test as our alternative hypothesis. Okay, so we go ahead and choose a um, number of resamples M, and I just chose 10 to the 4 because it's big, but not so big that my computer will get swamped. And then we need to create a vector to hold our simulated test statistics. Um, and we want to fill it with some number that will be easily recognizable so that if at the end of this whole thing, if we still see that number, then we know something funny is going on. So here I made a vector, just filled it with one, two, three, four, fives. And we can look at the head of that. So we have one, two, three, four, five several times. We can look at the length just to make sure um, nothing funny is going on. There we go. Okay. And one more thing that we want to do before we dig into our for loop is we need to calculate the original average difference. So we have our differences already for each swimmer. Now let's just take the mean of those. So that is 0.86666 forever. Okay, so that's gonna be our original test set. It's our original average difference. Um, and just that we have this for later, let's calculate the number of swimmers in our data set. So that's the n row of the swim data, and that is 15. And for reproducibility, let's set the seed to be one, two, three, four. So what this means is if you type all this same stuff and set the seed to one, two, three, four, we're gonna use the same random numbers, and so we should get the same results. Potentially, if we have different operating systems, it won't be like exactly the same, but at least on your machine, if you do this again and again, you'll get the same results. And similarly for me, if I run this again on my own computer, then I will get the same p-value, the same random numbers. All right, so let's get into our for loop. Basically what we want to do, we said that we're going to swap the left and right shoulder measurements. And since our difference is just left minus right, swapping the left and right shoulder measurements means we'll just take our difference and then 
if we're swapping it, throw a negative sign on the front or take the negative sign away from the front. In other words, we're just going to multiply by negative one if we swap the left and right shoulders. Um, so what we want to do is randomly select some of these swimmers to swap their left and right shoulders. And let's remember our sample command. So if we do sample C negative one one, and let's say size equals one. If we do this one time, it's going to randomly choose one number between um, either negative one or positive one. And for all these, for whatever, okay, now we finally got a negative one. So that's what that's doing. If we, um, we want to do this for every single swimmer. We want to choose for every single swimmer whether we're going to swap their left and right or not. So we're going to actually use size equals n. And let's just see what happens when we just leave it at this. I know what will happen, but let's just show you. It's getting confused because the default is to sample without replacement. So if we're trying to choose seven numbers out of two numbers, that's not gonna happen, right? We need to sample with replacement so that we can have enough numbers. So we go ahead and say replace equals true instead. And let's just run this one time so we can see what happens. Okay, so I run this sample command once. We choose n equals 15 numbers. We sample with replacement. And so here we can see we have some negative ones, some positive ones. If we do it again, we'll get a different set, some ones, um, some positive ones, and some negative ones. Okay, so if we, for example, for our first swimmer, if we take our first swimmer, they have a diff of one, and then this is saying, do not swap them. Do not swap their right and left shoulders. If we're looking at this fourth swimmer here, originally they had a difference of negative two, and again, we're not going to swap their different, their left and right shoulder. Here um, for our second to last swimmer, they do have a negative one, meaning we are going to swap their left and right shoulder. So we would multiply their measurement by negative one. Of course, negative one times zero is still zero, but maybe let's look at one that's more interesting. This swimmer here, the like 10th-ish, has a negative one, meaning we're going to swap their left and right shoulders. So instead of having a left shoulder that's more flexible by six units, in this simulated data set, they'll have a right shoulder that is more flexible by six units. Okay, so we go ahead, go in there, sample, look at the signs, multiply the signs by the original differences to get our simulated differences. Okay, so let's just show you. So here's the signs that we've selected for this one iteration of the loop. Here's the original differences. And then here's the simulated differences. So we can see we went element by element and just multiplied the sign by the difference. So for this first swimmer, they went from negative one, or they went from one to negative one. For the last swimmer, they went from one to negative one. For the, or rather, for this last swimmer, they went from negative one to negative one. For the first swimmer, they started out with a difference of positive one, and then we swapped their sign, so they went to a difference of negative one. Okay, so we go and get these simulated differences, and then we just take the average of these simulated differences to find a sample mean, and we get negative 0.8666, and we go ahead and store that in the ith entry of nullest. So let's just do this once. Sample, find the simulated differences, find the average of the simulated differences, and store it in the ith entry of nullest. So let's just take a peek at nullest one now, and we have an average difference of 
um, 1.1333. Okay, so now that we kind of think that the innards of the loop probably work, let's go ahead and run that loop. And now we can take a peek at, uh, actually let's um, run that again with set.seed first so that we have reproducibility. And now let's take a look at the histogram. So this histogram is showing all of the um, 10,000 test statistics that we simulated under the null hypothesis. And remember the null hypothesis says left and right shoulders are equally flexible. So since the null hypothesis says left and right shoulders are equally flexible on average, it makes sense that the average difference is centered at zero. Okay, now let's compare our original test statistic against the simulated test statistics. So remember our original test statistic I labeled OG test stat and that was 0.8666. So let's draw a line on this histogram and color it red so that we can see it. So here is our original test statistic in red and then the histogram is our simulated test statistics. Since our alternative hypothesis is the two shoulders are different on average, then it's a two-sided alternative hypothesis. We're not guessing right shoulders are more flexible or left shoulders are more flexible. We are just checking for a difference between the two shoulders. So it's a two-sided alternative and what that means is that we need to um, find the number of simulated test statistics less than or equal to our original test statistic and the number of simulated test statistics that are greater than or equal to our original test statistic. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, remember that we can use the sum because this null this less than or equal to OG test stat. And this is just going to be a whole lot of true or false. We'll have 10,000 true or falses spitting out um, saying that for this 995th one, the test statistic is not less than or equal to our original test statistic. And for this 981st one, the simulated test statistic is less than or equal to our original test statistic. And remember, one is true, or rather true is one, false is zero. And so if we add all those true falses up, then we get account the number of test statistics that are less than or equal to our original test statistic. And then we add one on because we need to also account for our original test statistic. So that's for our lower tail here. We have 8,841 less than or equal to our red test statistic, our original test statistic. And then we have 1569 greater than or equal to our original test statistic. Now we need to take the lower of those two numbers, the smaller of those two numbers. We can do that with the min command. And so, like obviously we know 1569 is smaller than 8841, but just to make the computer do it so we don't have any like typos or stuff like that, this will be our numerator for our p-value. Uh, well, part of our numerator. Um, and then the denominator, we take our number of resamples, add one on for our original resample, or for our original sample rather. And so our denominator is m plus 1, 10,000, 1. Okay, so our p-value then is 2 times this numerator divided by the denominator. So our p-value is 0.3137 ish. And that's pretty big, or at least it's not small enough to make us think that um, the two shoulders are not, it's not small enough to make us think that the two shoulders have like some difference in flexibility on average. So what does this mean? Remember when you have a really small p-value, that's when you can reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. When you have a big p-value, bigger than your significance level at least, then you cannot reject your null in favor of your alternative. 
So here, since we have a relatively large p-value, it's larger than a usual um, significance level such as like 0.05 or 0.1 or 0.01. So since our p-value is greater than 0.05, then we would not reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. And what does that mean? We would not be able to say that right and left shoulders have different flexibilities on average. All right, so I hope that this helps with your permutation test. Remember the general idea is keep the pairings, but just think about swapping before and after, left and right, um, one twin with the other twin. And what that means in practice is that you'll just randomly select some of them to throw a negative sign in front of or take the negative sign away. All right, good luck. Happy coding. Take care.